Hey everyone. So, um, in this video, it has nothing to do with a dream, but I just am bothered in my heart about things that people believe about witful sin and about when Jesus Christ comes back and they get judged. And the majority of people pretty much believe this. So I just wanted to clarify a few things because it's very necessary for this specific thing and it's been bothering me so. So this video is going to be about witful sin and about, um, I'm just gonna give a few Bible verses to back up what I'm saying basically because that's important when it comes to the scriptures and I read the King James Version 1611. So a lot of people have this idea that they can just live in their sin up until Jesus Christ comes back and when Jesus Christ judged them because they have repented, and I don't say that with repentance like turned away from their sin, I say that with repentance like said, I'm sorry Jesus, that what's going to happen for all of them is that God's just going to say, oh it's no problem and that'll be it. But there's more to it than that. People have this idea, some people have this idea that we are able to just live our lives and live in our sin and um, that that's just going to be something acceptable to God. And then some others believe that when we are taken up, because we change from mortal to immortal and we are made perfect, that it'll be like a pass to heaven. But the thing is this, yes, there are specific situations where people do turn to the Lord. And um, like I had read, uh, read testimonies and one was this man and he had received Jesus in his heart and then he died three days later. But that's not giving you enough time to get into the word and to know sin and what it is and how to overcome it and stuff like that. That's a different scenario than somebody like me, for an example, who's been with Christ since 2012, and I have knowledge to sin, and more than just one, I have knowledge to different sins, you know? So people think that they can just live in their sin, and up until Jesus Christ comes, so they can basically get the good life down there and the good life up there, and not have to struggle to really get that relationship with God, like, as in giving up your sin, because it is a struggle to give up your sin, but it's worth it. So they think that being in front of Jesus, they're going to get their pass and just go to heaven. Or they think that they're just going to be changed and made perfect. And that they're not going to have to basically strive to um, like really seek the Lord. That's the thing. Um, and it's not true. In the scriptures, God tells us, be perfect. And I know. A lot of people are going to say, well, you're not perfect and whatnot. And the thing is, right now we're in the time where we need to be perfecting. We need to be walking with the Lord. We need to be praying for deliverance from all of our sins. And I would like to show you some scriptures to show you why. I've said this, I've studied it as well, just to mention you know, of course, I'm not going to come on here and not have studied it. So I'm just going to start with Matthew 5 and 8. And I'm just looking down here because I have my book down here that I wrote in yesterday. So this is Jesus talking, okay? And he says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. It's not symbolic for something other than what, he said, it is what it is. Be ye therefore perfect. If you have struggling sins in your heart, any sin at all, there is, you haven't fully surrendered your full heart to God yet. That's the thing. And a lot of people truly love God, like a lot. Many people, we all love God, like a lot. Like you wouldn't be here watching this if you didn't love God, you know? But there is, um, you can't, 
your your heart hasn't been fully surrendered fully surrendered to God if you have not if you haven't overcome your sin all of it so we'll start with that and then we'll go to 1 Corinthians 10 and 13 which is there hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it so right there God's saying that he has not given you knowledge that you can't handle like the, the information that he's given you about sin and the choice that you have to make the decision to fall in the temptation or not he has given you enough um, power from the Holy Spirit to support like he can support you he can help you to overcome it he is faithful he would not give you the information if he knew you couldn't handle it he gives you light for what you can handle and um, that's why it says who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able we're able to make the decision every single time we endure temptation to choose yes or no, like to accept it or not accept it. And he's telling us in the scripture that, well, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, in the scripture, because, you know, the Bibles are like love letter from God. He's telling us that he would not give us more than we can handle and that if we know it, we can handle it. And I know sometimes we don't feel like we can, we feel overwhelmed, but we need to just be calm and be still. Or um, we can ask others to pray for us, or um, we can fast. You know, there's different things to overcoming temptation to help. Um, before I do continue with my other verse, I just want to explain, just say a little bit about temptation, because a lot of people have trouble with temptation. But I'll tell you what I've noticed works for me. The first thing is, for everything that I know of, for like everything that I know of that's good and bad, of course, um, in my mind they're like separate, you know what I mean? And if I start to have any um, sinful thoughts, what I'll do is as soon as it enters my mind, I will either um, distract myself by thinking about God or I will, I'll put it away from me. I'll put it away from me so that it does not linger. You know what I mean? Because the devil can try to put thoughts in your mind and he does sometimes. He puts thoughts in your mind that are not your thoughts. And he will try to get you to linger on to lustful thoughts or sinful thoughts to have habits that are bad ultimately losing your salvation. That's the whole goal of his trying to tempt you so bad. It's just the salvation. He doesn't care how he has to do it. He just wants to do it so that you lose your soul. But if you don't take the two second rule, once it goes in your head, let it go back out. Don't focus on it. Don't think about it. Don't, um, don't let it linger. You know what I mean? In your mind. And that's something that's more difficult because nobody knows what you're thinking most of the time, but God does. So don't let it linger in your mind because that's when it starts to become lust and that's when it starts to uh, hurt you. You know what I mean? Spiritually. If there is a problem that you're having with specific sins, habitual sins, try your best to do that. And if, it has, if you haven't addressed it yet with God, that's definitely important. It needs to be addressed um, however if you're constantly thinking about the sin that it is whatever sin it is like let's say for me I had struggled with gluttony okay so if I'm constantly thinking about oh I got to overcome the sin I got to overcome the sin chances are you're gonna keep doing that same sin but what I have noticed is that when you focus your mind on Christ and you think about God, like if I just think about God and I think about, oh, his eyes are so beautiful. Or if I think about, um, you know, just anything that is good and pure and righteous thoughts, then what happens is slowly you'll see that all the sin in your life is going to start to just detach from you. Because when you focus on Christ, that's when your sin really starts to go away because then you're... You'll love God more and more. You draw closer to him. 
and you don't want to sin and you start to feel happier not doing it. And there's going to come times when the temptation arises, but the two second rule, once it goes in, make sure you like think about something else or don't linger on it. That's the point. Don't linger on the thoughts. Let it go out right away so that you're not going to be caught up because ultimately it's just going to lead you down a one way, one way street that's going to do nothing for you. So I'm just going to go to Hebrews 10 and 26 right now. For if we sin witfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. There's a difference between when it comes to, uh, sorry, willful, sorry about that. Um, when you're willfully sinning, you know the difference, but you're deciding to do it. But there is a difference between that and a habitual sin. Habitual sin is something that you're struggling with more. So it may take fasting. It may take other people praying for you to break it. Don't be discouraged that these sins in your life have happened because it is in the sense that it's, it's, expected God knew it was going to happen but just truly repent truly repent pray seek God uh, build that bond with the Lord and then you're just going to start to hate sin more and more and more and it's just going to come off it's just you're just going to see it going like it's just I don't even know how to really explain it in the best way but basically you're not going to be struggling so much with it anymore the way that you would have previously. Sorry, it's a fly. Um, and you'll see the layers of sin just come off your heart. So, true repentance is not just saying I'm sorry, but it's turning away from your sins. You know? And when I say don't be discouraged that you sin, I mean that all of these will be trial, um, all these will be, you can overcome it with Christ and it will be a testimony for God that the Holy Spirit is working in you. So, you know what I mean? True repentance is turning away from your sins. It is being consistent. So um, I just want to read James chapter 1 and verse 4. And it says, But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That's another verse I want to read. Uh, Galatians 5 and 9. And this one is a little bit different than the rest, but I just want to add it in there because I do feel like it's something that would be a good example for sin. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. If you have a loaf of bread and you put something into it, okay? Like if you put, um, whether it's something grotesque, or it can just be a little bit of anything that is disgusting or anything that is over an abundance. If you put that whole loaf of bread into the oven and you cook it, what happens? You can't just take the loaf of bread out and cut a piece off and throw the piece out because the whole, what you put into that bread is all marinated into it when it's in the oven and it cooks together. And that's kind of like sin. When you have one sin in your heart that's not dealt with, it's it's like literally like it's into that loaf of bread, it's into your heart and it just cooks, it simmers. Like you're, you're not purified. You're not purified to, to the extent that you need to be. So I just want to explain a little bit of that. Um, and I just wanted to give a couple examples of men in the scriptures that were perfect. And I don't mean perfect in their whole life like, um, like they've never sinned in their life because everyone sinned. 
but I mean they walked perfectly in the Lord, like they fully surrendered their heart to God. And a lot of people feel like, oh, I can't do that so hard in these day in these days, like, you know, there's everywhere you turn, there's like something, whether it refers to sex or whether it refers to um, food, like there's, there's so many different things, you know? So I just want to tell you that you can, and God does not change. Um, and I would like to just give you a few examples of men that were perfect, because a lot of people really struggle with believing that, you know, you have to, in order to, you have to be walking perfectly and upright. A lot of people think that you just, you don't have to. So I'm just giving a few examples of men that were perfect in God's sight. So this is Job, Job chapter one, verse one. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And eschewed means like he hated evil. And there's Genesis 6 and 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Genesis 17 and 1. And Abraham was 90 years old and 9. The Lord appeared to Ab uh, Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And sorry, I said Abraham. I meant to say, I meant to say Abram. A-B-R-A-M. 2 Samuel 22 and 3. God is my strength and power. And he maketh my way perfect. First Chronicles 28 and 9. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Now, I just want to say this a little bit before I continue with the next verse. This is, be, be perfect is not just for the days, the, the days of law. There, it's for the days of grace as well. They had to give their full heart to God back then in the days of law. And in the days of grace, we need to give our full heart to God as well, especially now that he's coming back. It's not the same as when somebody dies um, and goes to the grave at this time. It's a, it's a difference. When Christ comes back, there is a higher, um, there are higher needs that need to be met. And... Like I just given you a few scriptures out of the New Testament and they pertain to us. And like Christ had said, be perfect, even as his father was, is perfect, sorry. So I'm going to read Psalms 18 and 32. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. And I'm almost done, I got another three here. Romans 12 and 2, New Testament. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God's not going to give you what you can't handle. He will really, really help you. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all, not some, not a couple, all, filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in fear, in the fear of God. Sorry about that. So that's quite blunt. Um, Colossians 1 and 28. 
whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. And that's the last one that I have. But I would hope that I at least showed you guys, um, for those of you who don't know, because I'm sure there's some who do, but um, I hope that I showed you enough Bible verses for you to even consider what I'm saying to you right now because it is true. It's very important to know this. I don't want you guys something happening that you end up being in front of Christ and then you lose your salvation over some over people telling you that it's okay to live in your sin. It's not okay to live in your sin. God didn't expect you to be in. Well, God, it's not that he didn't expect you to be in the same sin. He knew the way. He knew exactly what was going to happen from the time that you were born to the time that you die. But what his goal is, is to save us. And Jesus Christ says throughout the whole scriptures, he came to call sinners to repentance. He came for our salvation. He does not want you to be living in the same sin from the time you're 15 to 35. And I just want to give good news of um, hope that you do have all you need to overcome it. And like I was saying, there's fasting, there's praying. Um, but right now is the time we need to get it right. Um, this is a little bit of a rough message. I'm sure that some people who know me know that this is something that I've believed for a while. But right now we do not have the time to really uh, tinker around. Uh, it's very important to get these messages out because when Christ comes back, I just don't want... I would like to try to help anyone that I could. I don't want anyone to go to hell. And I know there are people that are going to go, but I don't want it. And if I can prevent it in whatever way, then I will. And I could give you a lot more verses than that. But if you were to look it up yourself, you would be mind blown to just how many different verses are in the scriptures about being perfect. God really wants us to fully surrender our heart to him. He wants us to be praying consistently. He wants us to be worshiping him, uh, sitting still, thinking about him, praising him. He wants us to be um, reading the word, jumping into it. There's going to be a time where people are going to be faced with choosing God or not choosing God. You know what I mean? But um, it's just that time is coming really close and there's no there's no time to be playing around. Like we really need to get our hearts right today with the Lord. He's coming very quickly. So um, remember that it is growing closer to God for who he is, for how he is, for the way he is, for the love that he's given for the person that he is. It's growing closer to God. It's knowing more about Jesus. It is that falling in love more and more every day with him. That's really going to strip the sin away. That's going to change your heart. You know, so try to focus more on God than the sin because that's what's really going to help you. But be wise to it. And remember the two second rule. Once it goes in your head, don't let it linger. Make sure that you think about something else or you don't focus on that thought. And it will help you tremendously. That's something that will help you tremendously to not fall into those temptations and to not have the overwhelming feelings of feeling bad. You know what I mean? Like of wanting it so bad. And then after a while, what's going to happen is the temptations are going to die down. And then you'll have some times where they're really hard, but it is okay. Because you can still overcome it. Two second rule. Um... Fasting, prayer, there's a lot more people than you know that loves you out there and I am one of them. So I just uh, pray that with all this being said, that it will be profitable for you. And I hope everyone has a good day.